In approaching this film, uh, these writers put their emphasis firmly on character, and uh, that in turn informed our approach to casting. We wanted actors for the film who <coughs> reflected um, the inner drives of our heroes, who were able to sort of externalize that. And after many casting calls and many film tests, kind of old-fashioned uh, screen tests, uh, we struck gold. Uh, Taylor Kish, who you're going to uh, have a chance to talk with in a little bit, uh, as you may know, uh, uh, came from the acclaimed TV series Friday Night Lights and the film Wolverine and, and other projects as well, and um, truly brought a dark complexity to the character and, and a sense of damaged goods in this character, somebody who has an arc to go through and, and has redemption to achieve. Um, at the same time, we needed somebody that had kind of a wry Indiana Jones-like sense of humor to keep the film buoyed up, and, and Taylor has that in spades as well. Lynn Collins, who shared the screen with Taylor and Wolverine, is a Juilliard-trained actress known for her roles in The Merchant of Venice and HBO's um, True Blood. Lynn's character, Deja Thoris, is heir to the throne of the Martian city of Helium. She's the regent of sciences there, and she's been trained to, to rule and fight, uh, kind of like the Israeli uh, army. Everybody uh, on Mars has to uh, serve at some point or other. Uh, she comes to the role with a fiery passion and conviction and inner strength, which, which really demands your attention. Casting the, the other two main characters was an entirely different challenge in the film. There are Tharks, there are nine foot tall, green creatures uh, with forearms and tusks in the final film that are all created in computer graphics. Um, but we went with our Pixar experience to, to try to get the, the nuance of performance and um, cast actors for their eyes and their, their voice and their acting ability. Three things we knew we could translate into these computer graphic characters when we, when we got to that point in the film. When you cast Willem Dafoe, you get all the gravitas, nobility, and wisdom the two-time Academy Award-nominated actor um, has to offer. Uh, another two-time Academy Award-nominated actress, Samantha Morton, voices Sola, who plays Willem's daughter. She brings a, a vulnerability and compassion to her Thark character, uh, making her unlike the rest of the, the Tharks, which are kind of a warlike and, and kind of barbaric bunch. Um, we wanted, more than anything, to believe these characters were actually in the scene. We didn't want it to have a synthetic feel. We wanted to have them to feel very rooted. So we came to the conclusion that we needed these actors to always be in the scene when we were filming. They had to be present when we were shooting to interact with the other actors, whether it was Taylor or Lynn or, or whomever. So we had to convince them to do this task, which Amanda to us saying, like, how would you like to wear gray pajamas and walk on stilts in the desert in 120 degrees. Uh, and um, they uh, actually said yes. I think they were intrigued by the fact we kind of came clean with them at the beginning. Uh, and also, I think it was an interesting role for them, uh, all of the actors that played these characters, just to kind of try a different mask on um, as an actor. The, uh, the result was really great from taking the time and effort to do this. Um, uh, it, I, I think, uh, made much better for performances for both the Thark characters and our human actors since they actually were playing off one another. Uh, in terms of things like eye lines and framing, uh, I think it helped our, our cameraman immensely. Um, so so it, it, it paid off. To, to capture the facial data, we wanted to capture facial data for reference for, for the animators. Um, we actually designed uh, tusk cams, so you can see the little cameras uh, uh, in that shot in the middle there. Um, they, they actually worked well for the actors since the final characters have tusks. It sort of served two purposes. It captured the data and kind of served as a prosthetic for them to act and know how they'd be looking and holding their head and so forth as they, as they went. Um, in addition to the Tharks, there are a number of other creatures uh, featured uh, in the books that we see in the movie as well. They're the Thoats that are kind of the beasts of burden. Uh, they, they're horses, they're cows, they use them for various things. There's the, uh, the white apes, which are these uh, ferocious creatures, the most ferocious creatures on Mars, are these blind, nocturnal hunters. Uh, there's the warhoons. The warhoons are kind of the, kind of the bastard cousin of the Tharks. They're kind of the missing link version of the Tharks. They're big and they're, 
they're angry and barbaric and uh, uh, ferocious. And you'll see some scenes with those I'm going to show you in a little bit. And then the Callets down at the end, they're kind of big lizard dog characters. And uh, Woola is a key character in the film, and, and I'll show you a scene that um, highlights Woola in a little bit. One of the other things we thought was missing in the original Princess of Mars book um, was an antagonist uh, worthy of Carter's heroics. We searched the later books and brought forward an ancient religion and people called the Therns. And, and the Therns are our kind of overarching bad guys in the movie. Mark Strong, we have playing Matt Tai Shang, who is the leader of the Therns. Joining the cast, we surrounded the lead actors with seasoned pros, um, uh, great British actors in particular, uh, who really uh, were able to, I think, retain the spirit of the book and the performances they, they gave. 